Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sid. And I'm Maggie. And today we are going to talk about our riding kit because we've gotten a lot of questions about why we wear different kinds of clothes, like different kinds of packs. Sometimes we wear knee pads, sometimes we don't. So we thought we'd had a lot of questions about helmets and glasses shoes, and gloves. Yeah, stuff. so. Figured we would just go through it. Yeah. Quick and dirty and. Show you guys what we wear for different types of riding. Yeah, let's do it. So the one thing that we always wear is a chamois. We are both solidly on team chamois. Yes. There are a lot of mountain bikers who are like, I trained my butt not to ride with the chamois. <laughs> right, whatever works for you. <laughs> whatever works for you. <laughs> I think those people don't ride that much, but that's just yeah. my opinion. <laughs> Generally, the benefit of a chamois is that it provides a little extra padding between your butt and the saddle. If you think about sitting on a hard wooden chair for an extended period of time and rubbing back and forth slightly, <laughs> that's not comfortable. That's what a chamois is for. So we highly recommend chamois. But the other thing is they thing. provide a little protection for those really bad moments when you land on the top tube of your bike for whatever reason. Yeah, those that, are no as fun. As a female is helpful. I don't know if it helps at all for a guy when that happens. It might not just really. be bad regardless. Yeah. But anyway, chamois are great. Another quick note about chamois, you do not wear anything under a chamois. And I bring this up because as a 12-year-old Mackie, I had to ask <laughs> people who were leading the group ride that I was doing if I was supposed to wear anything under the chamois. So, so no, no underwear with your no chamois. No underwear with the chamois, just the chamois. Don't rewear your chamois. That's yep. how you get saddle sores and it's not, nasty not fun. stuff. We also often wear base layers. This is just... It. It's a comfort thing. It's a comfort it, like, thing. They help breathe. They Less help chafing. wick sweat away from your body. They keep you a little bit cooler. And they keep your jersey from smelling bad. So if yeah. you only have one or two logo jerseys or one or two jerseys that you really like. Luckily we have tons so we don't have that problem, but base layer might save you a lot of laundry. Yeah. So base layers are great. When we aren't wearing a pack, which happens occasionally, usually we do wear packs, but sometimes for certain rides we don't, for certain races we don't. When that's the case, we wear the Pearl Izumi base layer that has pockets in it, which we really like. You can fit water bottle, phone, tools. Super convenient. It's very convenient. They also make some bibs with pockets um, in with them. Pockets. Yep. We figure we'll start from least gnarly riding that we do and go to most gnarly. <laughs> yep. We do not do the full spandex XC kit. Nothing against that if that's comfortable for you. I think as we do some more road riding, maybe this winter, we'll get some like gravel riding kits because um, there is something very nice and minimalist about that. But yep. for this year, we were pretty much full enduro, mm -hmm. even during the XC races. So this is what we wore for our more casual trail riding, XC racing intervals on the road. Shoes, which are the Pearl Izumi X Alp Elevates. Which we wear for everything. Which we wear for everything. <laughs> having multiple pairs of shoes is just a logistical Nightmare. nightmare and you get used to the shoes and so you yeah. know how to get out of them quickly or out of your cleats in the right quickly spot. yeah you don't have to worry about like your knees not liking different shoes mm -hmm. as we've talked about for me that's a big issue um then chamois shorts base layer short sleeve shirt and the laser revolution mips helmet um with pot glasses for more of more aggressive trail riding, we will pretty much do that exact outfit plus knee pads. Knee pads are wonderful. Knees are very often that first point of contact. I find that I'm like way more confident leaning my bike in corners if I have knee pads on. If you're not used to them, that might not be true. Once you do get used to them, it can be hard to not wear them. Yeah. We use the POC VPD system knee pads. We really like them. They're comfortable. You can pedal in them and they provide a lot of really good protection. Next up for enduro racing, that's generally the same kit that we just wore, but we wear our custom team jerseys. For a slightly gnarlier race or colder weather, we will wear the three quarter length jerseys. We do not generally wear elbow pads. I'm sure someone will tell us how stupid that is in the comments. Um, <laughs> the reality is that we just don't like elbow pads. And we have worn them in the past. Um, what I found personally is elbow pads tend to cut off my circulation, even if they fit properly and are really nice. And arm pump is more likely to make me crash. And therefore I would rather risk elbow scratches or injury when I crash and be less likely to crash than be protected and more likely to crash. Everything we've shown you so far has been the Pearl 
launch jerseys either in the three quarter or the short sleeve and I was wearing the women's and Matthew's wearing the men's and we've both been wearing the Pearl Summit shorts and I wear the men's of those as well. Um, I'll wear the women's for things where I'm not wearing knee pads because I have like 40 inch long femurs, <laughs> basically. <laughs> not quite actually that long, but long enough that if she doesn't wear the men's summit shorts, she gets a gap between her knee pads and her shorts and nobody likes a gap. Nobody likes a gap. We will sometimes wear our chin bar on our Revolution Mips helmets. And these are removable, but they're not easily removable. So we don't generally like pop them off for the climbs. We will take out the cheek pads and then climb with the full with the helmet just without the cheek pads, and put the cheek pads back in. Super light and you can breathe really well. So this is good for like a enduro that's pretty technical and fast. So you do want that face protection, but you also there might be some like pedaling in the stages that you want to be able to breathe for or really long climbs that you don't want to wear a traditional full face for or it's like a really hot day yeah um, so we these wore have these... all the, the same ventilation as a cross-country helmet or a trail helmet you also can wear them just with sunglasses which we it looks dorky but <laughs> if you're pedaling a lot it's just you can breathe so much better and you don't have like that heat of goggles on your face. This is what we wore for Butte. the Crested Butte Enduro. In Grand Targi. Yep. And probably gonna take it to Europe as well because we have long transitions and the European stages tend to not be like super fast or bike parky so I don't really feel the need to have the full on helmet. So bike park riding or more gnarly Enduros or Enduros that are in bike parks. This is where we bust out the spine protector. We use the POC system VPD spine protector. Really like that. It's like pretty comfortable, not too hot, not too heavy compared. We don't really like the whole chest shoulder. That's just like too much, too bulky. I have a longer pair of Pearl Izumi shorts. They're the Elevates and I generally wear those in the bike park. They cover my knee pads a little bit better um, and they're a slightly thicker material so they provide a little bit extra protection if I end up going down. We wear the Laser Phoenix Plus helmet. It's just standard, full face. It's light, which we like. Yeah. You don't feel like your head's getting flopped around all over the place. Um, we wear them with POC goggles. The more money you pay for a full face, the lighter you will get. Even the cheaper ones are generally like pretty good protection. They just don't have the comfort and the lightness of your more expensive helmets. So number one priority, protect your head. The last piece of protection that we are gonna talk about is gloves. Always wear gloves. Some people really hate gloves and don't wear them. Um, if you crash, your hands are gonna hit the ground, pretty much for sure. And hand injuries are painful and scrapes on your hands are really annoying. You should always wear gloves. We wear full fingered gloves all the time. We just, we find them comfortable. We don't find them that hot and they provide a little bit extra protection. Hope that was a helpful look at the different kind of clothing kit gear protection etc <laughs> that is out there in the mountain bike world so hopefully you can make a better choice for what you need for the kind of riding that you do and leave your questions in the comments and in the meantime be more awesome <laughs> you get me every time with that it's the same thing.